And now, ladies and gentlemen, there is but one thing left to do, and that is to find out, are you ready for the Chili Bowl? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is officially the Saturday finale for the 2024 Chili Bowl Nationals, or what I like to call Driller Day. We are about to head on inside the building. It's almost 9 a.m., and they are getting ready to get cars on track for the P main event. Pretty crazy, a race with 370 cars. We're down to two P main events to start the day, and then they go into the O mains and rip all the way through the alphabet soup, so everyone will get one more opportunity to get on track. I think in total, they have 32 events to run. So it's going to be a long day. It's going to be a fun one. We're going to see a lot of great racing action and we're going to bring you along for a full Saturday experience at the Chili Bowl and see who is going to go home later this evening with the Golden Driller. So here's a look at the uh, CB Industries pit. We are set in stone and going to be rolling off from fourth today in our J main. After some unfortunate luck and just a tough prelim night, we're now going to try to roll through the alphabet soup and see how far we can get. And you never really know what can happen inside this building. To get prepared, I actually watched, uh, there's an awesome video that Flow Racing did on Jason McDougall's alphabet soup run from a couple of years back. He went through like six or seven of them, so it's definitely possible. You got to be aggressive. You got to be able to pass cars and also you have to have luck on your side and have things go your way and here's what the inside of the building looks like before any laps are completed early Saturday morning fans are all trying to get their seats this place is going to be a packed house in even just a couple of hours it's really really wild what this event attracts and like I said come Saturday night there's not a single place to sit the pits are completely full people are just happy to watch on the big screen and as I told you cars are being called the staging so all day long they're going to be rolling right down here and another impressive view is just this whole entire pit area and if you look they're just pushing cars on track right now so with a lot of organized chaos ahead of us today in the building it's important that the show moves fast and efficiently and the sponsor of today's video Raceiver they help make that happen so Raceiver is the leader in dirt racing communications they make these little devices which are one-way communication basically the race officials and race directors can speak directly to the drivers or anyone, race fans, our drivers, crew chiefs, people in the stands can also have them so they understand what's going on. And a lot of times they're used just to simply line up, you know, tell us when to go single file, when to go double file. Maybe if I'm two spots ahead of where I need to be, then they move me two spots back and they communicate directly to the drivers. So it all happens like that and we can get back to green flag racing. So they're firing cars right now. Big thank you to Raceiver, definitely head on over to their website, raceiver.com. Browse through all their products. I will put a link at the top of the description. They have a couple different variations, but no matter what, no matter what your spot is in motorsports, it's definitely worth having one of these to improve your overall experience. These guys are about to get some hot laps, then we're gonna roll into today's alphabet soup.
uh, J, so that's good. We got through that first main. That was gonna be an easy one. Um, just never really got in a great rhythm there. Finally did, I mean, halfway through, started making better laps, but hopefully, you know, kind of just throw those out the way, and um, you know, now it'll be nice that we've been on the racing surface. So um, we're gonna be rolling off probably from 11th or 13th here, and we gotta get towards the top six. We're gonna have to be aggressive early and move around and use every lane and uh, stand on the gas and go. So, trying to get in a rhythm here, and I think once you get rolling, you can move through it faster. Another main, so we're getting ready to roll into our third one. That one had a little bit of drama. My earphones had fallen out before the green. I realized that, you know, like I only put one in, I couldn't hear. So I stopped and I thought that I would get my spot back. Um, they didn't give it to me, but it all worked out because where I started, a lane opened up and I got just about to where I started and then some. So I um, ended up starting 16th and I think is where we were scheduled or you know where we actually rolled off from and, and won the thing. So made, uh, made uh, some great passes and now we are on to what would be I think the H main. Um, so we're gonna be starting 11th. Uh, Got to pass five, six cars. It's all about the start though. You, get, you can get a good start. You can transfer through these things, but um, it's all right place, right time. So they're gonna keep working on the racing surface. More laps are gonna go and we'll be right back out.
So we clicked off another one and we're about to start our fourth main of the Saturday. Everyone would always joke, they would say like, I'm hungry, I wanna eat some alphabet soup. Like I've already been eating that, the soup, um, but I'm not full yet, so I gotta keep moving forward. Car feels good, it's just hard trying to get a clean lane sometimes. I had another good start on the bottom. We're gonna start on the bottom again here, but a little farther back. I was hoping to make a little more ground. I finished fifth or fifth, fourth or fifth, and every car I pass in these mains helps me for the next one. So even though you get a transfer spot, you can't be content because you can make your life easier for the next main. Overall, this is gonna be a tougher task since we gotta pass a couple more cars, but as long as I can get a clean lane, get going, we're making adjustments. The track is slickening off and getting hard to hit the bottom, and even one and two, the top's not super fast either. So we're just trying to adjust so I can use even some of the lanes that aren't as quick, because I gotta pass cars and go where they're not, but just need to be a snap quicker um, on some of my moves, and if we can get going here the first couple laps, uh, we ab absolutely, absolutely have another shot at making it through this one. I think we're up to the, we gotta be on the G main maybe, maybe the G, yeah, we're on the G, we're in the G, try to get through it. Soup run ends at uh, four main events there. Definitely wanted to get more. I was, uh, I felt good. I just, you know, there was just kind of a slow start. Took me a minute to get in the right spot at the right time and then finally started making some ground. Um, and then on the last restart, I just made one crucial mistake. I, I thought the car in front of me was definitely gonna go to the top. He kind of was at a weird angle and it trapped me and I just didn't get, I just didn't get where I needed. And then going down the back stretch, it hurt my momentum to get in front of him. If I would've got in front of him, I think I would've been okay, but. Um, is what it is, man. That was a good little run. It was nice to get some great laps. It just sucks that I was close. You know, it wasn't like we got knocked out running six spots out of a transfer spot. We basically were side by side, I think, there to the line. Um, if, if the car, honestly, in front of me wouldn't have came across the track, I might have had the forward momentum to get it. But is what it is. It's chilly bowl.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, there is but one thing left to do, and that is to find out, are you ready for the Chili Bowl? We just finished up opening ceremonies. Probably one of my favorite parts of the event. I'm sad that I'm not in my driving suit. But if you turn, this place is absolutely packed. Gosh, this is one of the coolest events in the world, the Rowdies. The Rowdies this way are going nuts, but we just carried the Oregon flag out. I was the only Oregon guy here this year, so I had to make sure I stepped out and represent my state, but um, we're about to get into the best part of the night. They're about to roll out C3A main event, so this will be a good show. And just like that, the Chili Bowl is complete. A friend of mine and someone I really looked up to coming up through the Outlaw Cart ranks as he was the factory QRC house driver um, in the years before me, Logan CV got his second driller and I was really excited to see him get it done. He really ran a good race and this year, I mean, they, they tried something a little different with the track prep and it unfortunately took rubber by maybe lap 30. A lot of guys started migrating to the bottom and unfortunately it just turned into a pavement race down around the berm. Of course, you never want to see anything like that, but you know, like anything, that's uh, sometimes how it goes, and Logan put himself in a great spot to be up front, have the track position to take advantage of that opportunity. As far as for us, we made a little bit of noise inside this building. We made it through a couple of lower mains. Happy with the experience I got. Of course, I always want to do better, and you know, I want to be in the Saturday finale, but we're going to keep working towards that, and for me, I just, I need more laps, and I need consistent laps, and maybe some more midget races of course before I come here that would definitely help but still in the end you got to have the Tulsa luck and got to be able to put it all together so big thank you to Chad Boat and CB Industries I enjoyed kind of being a spectator after I was done I mean I didn't enjoy being a spectator but was taken in the event watched from turn two for the 55 laps watched my teammate Dason Persley run from the D main to four so that shows how fast Chad had our race cars and he was uh, dialed in around the bottom so thanks to CB Industries and also a big shout out to Mockridge and Engineering, Tim Vanderstool Trucking, Pit Stop USA, The Boss Big Box Store, and Shane DeWald Trucking. Without those guys, I would not be here. I would not have been at this event, and I can't thank them enough for their support. So, Driller Day is complete, and I'm sure we will be back inside this building in 365 days. Here's one last look at the racetrack and the cushion for the first 25 laps before it went to the bottom. This place is pretty crazy, and I have to say, as they're literally cleaning up and tearing everything out. It is so electric in here. The atmosphere, definitely one of the biggest dirt races in the country. And if you don't have this place on your bucket list, you absolutely should because it is incredible. All right, we'll see you in the next one. Deuces.